I woke up this morning to a stinky hot breath in my nose and a dollop of saliva on my cheek. I opened my eyes, and Major was staring down at me with such intensity, he could only mean one thing. He wanted to play. I could see his mouth opening as though to protest the refusal he surely knew was coming. It was only 2am after all. But we were spared the back and forth when my phone dinged to life. Major jumped off of me and barked at it with excitement. A phone call at that hour, unfortunately, was nothing to get excited over. My brain was still foggy from waking up, so I can't recall the exact wording. But the gist of it was they needed my, and more importantly, Major's help finding a missing hiker. Major, for all his faults and reeking farts, was one of the best damn rescue dogs you'll ever meet. He has a keen sense for the mountain, and has an amazing track record and finding lost hikers, even when their trails have gone cold. I guess you win, boy, I mumbled as I got up and got dressed for work. I grabbed a cup of coffee on the way to the ranger station and tracked down the chief, who was looking at a gridded map and directing the search crews. There was a steady stream of orange jackets and headlamps walking up to and away from him. There were also multiple canine units. Major was the only dog off leash, and there was a good reason for that. Like I said before, he is great at what he does, but he has his faults. He tends to slip out of his collar and go off running on his own. Having worked with him for a few years now, I found the most successful way of dealing with him is letting him do his thing. He breaks from the pack, somehow finds the missing person, then runs back to me and leads me to them. Lassie style. The chief turned towards me. This is what I recall of the conversation. Dylan, Major, good, you're here. We have a hiking boot for you to sniff. This wasn't the time for humor, but I couldn't help myself. Hmm, me or the dog? I thought I was hilarious, but the chief gave me the look. He handed me the boot, and I crouched down on Major's level, holding it out to him to give it a good sniff. The boot was a spare they found in her car, but the scent was still strong enough for Major to track. We're looking for Rhonda James. She and her friends were supposed to go up the Pinewood Trail to see the sunset last night. They got separated, but the girls found their way back to the station about an hour ago. But there's been no trace of Rhonda. My stomach churned with dread. We should have closed the Pinewood Trail years ago. It's well marked, and the forest isn't too dense in that area. But somehow, every few months, people go missing. Most are found safe and sound before the search is even in full swing. But occasionally, Major and I come across badly mauled remains. The working theory is it's a cougar but no one's ever been able to find its den, let alone tracks. Either way, I hope we find Rhonda before it, whatever it was, did. Major was eager to go. So eager, in fact, that he didn't even wait for my signal. I looked away for one second, and he was running off towards the bushes, tail wagging frantically. If that damn dog wasn't so good at his job, I swear... No one would put up with him. I sighed, knowing there was no catching him. Thankfully, he had an almost supernatural ability to find people and make his way back to me. So I figured I'd see him trotting up sooner or later. I then went off the Pinewood Trail with a pair of rangers. I didn't like the Pinewood Trail by dark. There was something eerie about it I couldn't put my fingers on. You would think there would be comfort in the sparsity of the trees, but it has an opposite effect. To me, it's easier to imagine someone or something picking up from behind the trees where they're not as dense. I feel watched. I hear things that I shouldn't normally hear. I see figures, then look only to find a junior tree. Thicker parts of the mountain feel safer, like hunkering down behind a tall fence. Come to think about it, maybe it's because there's nowhere for me to hide. Rhonda James, shouted Alana. 
Hers wasn't the only voice calling for the missing hiker. Other rescuers called too. Their voices bouncing off the thin tree line like pinballs. We walked around for about an hour, periodically calling Rhonda's name. Before something answered. Something that chilled me to the bone. It was a whale. Feminine, but unnatural. It screeched with intensity, piercing through the mountainside with its haunting sharpness. That might be a cougar, Alana whispered. We looked at her, and I could see the other ranger, Parker, reaching for his rifle. I could feel the anxiousness in the air coming from all three of us. Do, do you think it's... I started. Parker interrupted. Shh. We have to go. Might not be too late. The assumption was that wherever the cougar was, its victim must be nearby. If she was lucky, she'd only be dragged around. If she wasn't, well, maybe we could still save her. Maybe she hadn't bled out yet. I don't know. In any case, we took off running in the direction of the shrieking and radioed other teams to try and triangulate the location. Until the shrieking came to a sudden sobering stop. Was it too late? Only time would tell. After about half an hour, the trees began to thicken, indicating we were leaving the Pinewood area. Much to my relief, I could see the distant spots of light every so often from other teams combing farther and higher up the mountain. I wondered if they saw us too. I lost track of time, but I think it was about another hour passed in silence, and we were starting to think we veered off course or something. And then, I heard footsteps behind me and froze. Parker and Alana stopped as well. Parker reached for his gun again, while Alana seemed to reach for her flares. My heart thrashed. Truth to be told, I'm not sure who wins in a fight between three people and a cougar. I have a sneaking suspicion it's the cougar. I turned slowly, holding my breath, as though a single inhale would be the tipping point between life and getting mauled in the face. And when I saw two glowing eyes looking back at me. No, glowing in the way animal eyes reflect light in the dark. I'm just about blacked out. There was something massive prowling in the bushes looking at us. Shoot it, Alana hissed. I, I don't see it, stammered Parker. I tried to point at it, but before my arm lifted, it jumped out of the bushes, and I saw the rapid batting of an enthusiastic tail. Major, you scared the crap out of us. Major barked and ran over. He was met with relief chuckles and head pats. And then, the disobedient rascal signaled he found something. My chest tightened, and I hoped to every god that I could think of that Rhonda was still alive. She was not. We found her soon afterwards, in a brutal scene of animalesque gore. She hadn't stood a chance. I think she fought, because some of her nails were broken, and there was a large canine embedded in her cheek. Worse yet, she was still a little warm. If any of us found her a bit sooner, she would have been fine. I quietly wondered whether Major had been with her in her final moments. She was brought out of the woods on a stretcher and sent to the medical examiner. Major and I returned home. He seemed happy as ever, not fully grasping the concept of death, I thought. I was heartbroken. I got myself some whiskey and collapsed back in bed with Major at my side. And then... My phone rang. As I rubbed Major's face, I heard the chief explain the two of they found Rhonda James didn't belong to a cougar. They suspect a wolf or a big dog of some sort. 
and suddenly, I felt the ground fall from beneath me. As I played with Major, I lifted his gums a tad bit, just enough to see an empty spot where one of his canines should have been. And I suddenly thought back to the intense look he'd given me that morning. The saliva on my face. The way he always finds the bodies first. Always mauled to death. How we always arrive just a bit too late. Oh my god. 